I'm Rebecca of Pocket Full of Posies. Today's project is very exciting. It is a collab with the lovely Shannon of Shannon Makes. I will link her it down below in the description. And we are doing 1940s trousers. Hepburn trousers named after the lovely actress Katherine Hepburn. And we're using the same pattern essentially. <laughs> we found the pattern online from my Vintage Wish Patterns. I will link that Etsy shop down below as well. I'm going to have to grade up this pattern a lot because it is for, it says 36 inch bust because it also has the blouse pattern, but I think, I'm pretty sure it's a 30 inch waist. So, the animals are making noise. So I'm going to be grading these up a lot and doing a lot of adjustments. Now this video is going to be the video of making a wearable mock-up because I wanted to make these trousers and wear them a bit and check some fit issues and all of that, especially because I am altering the pattern so much that I decided to just do a wearable mock-up. And so without further ado, let's get into it. Here we go. So I got, I got my pattern all taped together and I'm just, of course, just taping out, tape using the pattern with the size it can't, comes in first, which is size 18 in 1940, 36 inch bust. This is the Hepburn trousers and this blouse. Now, I, was going through the pieces and there are some missing. So I have the back slacks piece. I have the blouse back, the blouse front, the front facing, the collar, the yoke front, and the yoke back. I do not have any sleeves or the front of the slacks, but I think the pieces are the same, so I think I can just you know, cut out four of this. There's no belt either. That's not that big of a deal to me. Um, so I think really the only thing that's, that I'm missing that is important <laughs> is the sleeve for the blouse. but. I could probably figure out some kind of a sleeve to make. And I'm not focusing on the blouse at the moment, I'm focusing on the trousers. So let's get to work on the trousers. Okay, to start adjusting the pattern, I measured the trouser back piece and compared it to the finished garment waist measurement on the pattern. Without the extension for closure, the pattern piece measured 10 inches, including the back darts, which each dart is two inches. And I assumed the seam allowance to be half an inch. That was wrong, as I discovered later, it's actually three eighths of an inch seam allowance. The pattern's finished waist measurement is 30 inches. To determine how much I needed to add, I divided my waist measurement, which is 52 inches, by 30 inches, which is the finished pattern waist measurement. That came to 1.733. Next, I subtracted the seam allowance from the 10 inch width I had measured on the pattern piece. That got me to 9.5 because I didn't want to increase the seam allowance as well. So I'm going to add that back in later. I then multiplied that 9.5 by 1.733 that I had calculated earlier. That got me to 16.466. I added the half inch seam allowance back in and that got me to 16.966. I rounded that up to 17 and that is the width I need for the pattern piece. So I will add seven inches to the 10 inch pattern piece. I added three inches to the outside seam. Then I added the extension back to the pattern piece. I made sure to remark the notches and pattern markings. On the inside seam, I added four inches. 
I probably could have split that seven inches that I'm adding evenly and done three and a half on each side, but I didn't for unknown reasons. I marked the crotch rise and Hercules had ideas about that. I was really just experimenting because I had never graded up a pants pattern this much or at all, <laughs> so I was floundering a bit. I continued by adding that same four inches to the inside leg seam. Hindsight tells me that that was too much width for the legs and I should have tapered a bit from the hips down. Also, as a side note, these pants are incredibly long. So I have already, I've adjusted the length some because <laughs> when I held them up to myself, they were like, the pattern, just the pattern was hanging four inches below, like over my feet. <laughs> so I, I realized that they, yeah. So the length is probably going to have to be adjusted if you are of average height, which I am. I'm five foot six. So, but yeah, these are incredibly long. I know they're high waisted and the crotch seam on vintage pants or vintage patterns is lower. All the boys are in here. Come here, Loki. Hop up. Come here. I'll say hello. Oops. <laughs> there he is. Say hello. Be a good boy. Anyway. Yeah, they're really long. I had to get some Thor love too. to the first mock-up. I pinned my pants legs together down each seam. After sewing, I placed one leg inside the other. Right sides together this time and pinned the crotch seam. Checking out the fit, the crotch rise needs to be lengthened. Let's check in with Shannon and see how her mock-up is going. Hello everyone. So I've just got my first mock-up together and I also had to size this pattern up a little bit, but because I didn't trust my mathematics skills, I just went ahead and left a ton of excess on all of my seam allowances so that if I needed to let it out even more, uh, that I wouldn't have to go back and recut all of my fabric pieces. But the good news is that I think I did my calculations right. The mock-up looks pretty darn good. I'm very happy with the way that it's fitting. And so now the decision is, do I finish the rest of this mock-up to see how the pattern actually goes together? Or do I just skip right ahead and start cutting it out of the real deal? To adjust the crotch rise, I measured my crotch rise length and determined that I needed four more inches in length. To adjust my pattern, I am slashing and spreading that seam right above the curve of the crotch. I left the opposite side uncut, but I did cut off the extension. So I could pivot the pattern and also not add any length to the outside seam. I added two inches to the crotch seam. So with front and back together, it equals the four inches I need. On to mock-up number two. This will become my wearable mock-up. The fabric is a blend of some kind that I had in my stash. As before, I pinned both legs and then. So I have made a rather large mistake. I thought that my pattern was missing pieces because I printed it out and 
there were pieces missing. Did a mock-up, have started my second mock-up, and <laughs> look at <laughs> look at the pattern. <laughs> the left the like the PDF printout guide. And there is pattern one and pattern two. And pattern one is what I printed out. Pattern two is all the stuff I don't have. And then, and that's when I realized that when I downloaded the pattern, I printed out pattern one and I didn't print out pattern two. So, I'm still going to, I, I printed it out, but I don't think I'm going to use it for the pants because I've already adjusted the pattern of the back of the pants, which is the only piece I thought I had. <laughs> but I will, I will, um, I'm planning on making the blouse for the pattern, so I am going to. I am printing it out and I will uh, put that all, put it all together but as far as the pants go I don't think I'm going to use the front of the pants because I've already adjusted the pattern so this second mock-up if it turns out dreadfully then maybe we'll maybe I will put the front of the pants together but just looking at the pattern I don't think the front and the back are all that different except for the back has a has darts the back pieces have darts and the front doesn't so we shall see but yes I had to had to tell I had to convey my confession to you <laughs> I was sitting here like what why would you do this <sighs> right. off we go to the machine to sew the leg seams I also sewed the darts on the back pieces we're we are approaching good they are so <laughs> incredibly wide <sighs> I don't know like I'm not sure I feel like they're too wide but <sighs> let's keep going also I got some cute shoes to wear with the trousers and if you have chronic pain or back problems, as I do, get one of these extender magnet thingies to pick up pins. My best friend Laurie gave me this for Christmas, and it's awesome. For the hem, I first turned up half an inch and then an additional two inches and hand sewed it. I didn't feel like fooling with a cuff, and Hercules approved my decision. I then cut out an incredibly wide waistband. No idea why or what I was thinking. Have you ever done something so silly while sewing that looking back you just can't understand how you did it? <laughs> Let me know your stories down in the comments. I pinned my excessively wide waistband on. Why didn't Hercules stop me? After sewing, I turned the waistband to the inside and sewed it down. I hand sewed buttonholes and they are messy. Then 
I realized that the hymn was too long, so cuffs it is. I cut out little strips of fabric and sewed them into belt loops. I then realized that the waistband was too wide and cut it down, and yeah, I didn't film that part. I definitely learned a lot making this wearable mock-up. They are still too long. <laughs> Do I just have incredibly short legs? I don't know. Anyway, they are still too long and the waist is too big and the legs are a bit too wide. But I know that my next endeavor will be so much better because I made these. What do you think about wearable mock-ups? Are you a fan? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload or when YouTube decides to notify you, you can hit that little bell icon. If you'd like to support the channel, I have a coffee account and that is linked down below. Make sure to check out Shannon's video about her trousers, and I will see you again on our next sewing adventure. Bye!